this week's podcast I'm really excited about. 2021, a lot of people saying, hey, 2020's gone. Yay, let's move on. Well, let's be honest. It's exactly the same as it was. It's just a couple of days after last year. But on with me this week, Dr. Craig Duncan, him and performance strategist. And we, we're going to talk about managing the noise. How are you, mate? I'm really good, Greg. How are you? I'm really excited about this one. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health related condition. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Hydroxyburn Shred Ultra, nootropic thermogenic. Shred Ultra is scientifically engineered to shred body fat, ignite metabolism, and boost all-day energy while enhancing cognitive performance, focus, clarity, and mood. It combines powerful fat-burning thermogenics, Garcinia, green coffee bean, guarana, caffeine, and an industry-leading four grams of acetyl L-carnitine with potent nootropic ingredients at effective therapeutic doses to give you maximum results. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And at the end of that, I'm dropping in Managing the Noise with Dr. Craig Duncan. For those people that don't know or do want to contact Dr. Craig, he is drcraigduncan.com.au. So if you need to chat about any of these aspects of where we're going on this, feel free to jump on and have a chat to Craig. He answers all people who talk to him. So mate, today we're going to talk about managing the noise. Can you explain to me what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely, Greg. It's pretty much, I work from an equation that performance or human performance equals your capacity minus what I term the noise. So if we think about what is capacity, your capacity is your fitness, yep. your yep. studies, you know, going to school, going to university, uh, you know, in a corporate situation, you might bring someone in to help with team building, all these things that go towards building your capacity. Now, we spend a lot of time doing that on that side of the equation. On the other side of the equation is the noise or what I really think of as the things that detract away from that capacity you're trying to build. So the noise could be poor sleep, poor nutrition, not exercising stress, loneliness, isolation, all the things that take away from your capacity. So if we're looking at trying to increase human performance, what we don't want to get into is increasing the capacity, but on the other side, we're also increasing the noise. We want to increase our capacity whilst managing the noise and actually decreasing that. So we get a net gain in human performance. And that's my whole philosophy on, you know, trying to maximize people's potential. So from a, a team perspective, and obviously you've got a very, uh, you've got an amazing career in sport and you still are at the highest level of sport and you, that's what you are. You're a sports scientist. That's your, your doctorate. That's correct. Yep. 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 So when we look at where teams sit and where companies sit, most of the money these days is thrown at that capacity concept you're talking about. So we, we throw all this money into capacity, capacity, make them faster, make them jump higher, make them be more productive, make whatever it is in either a sporting team or a corporate, we go capacity, capacity, capacity. But the problem, what you're saying is we can keep putting money into there and stop and probably reduce budgets and capacity because if we put money into noise management, we're going to see greater return per asset that we're trying to get performance from. Would that be a correct way? You're, you're, you're absolutely right, Greg. And I've spent most of my career on, on this fact of managing the noise. And mm -hmm. I think that's why we've had a lot of success. I believe increasing the capacity is not difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's really not if we keep the sport analogy going, getting a team fit is not a problem. However, making sure that fitness increases whilst managing the fatigue and managing the injury risk is probably where where more work comes into it because I'm after a net gain in performance and you're right now that we do work in corporate space as well there's a lot of work done on just throwing dollars at capacity building yeah. where you will make much bigger gain if you learn to manage the noise and by and it's simple to actually work on and there's some real key aspects of the noise and that we will focus on today and how if we really look at that and managing that and anyone listening, it doesn't matter who you are, think about the noise in your life and how it's taking away from your capacity. And maybe that is why you're not maximizing your potential. So when, when you're just to get this noise concept right, and let, let's talk about uh, I'm somebody who just wants to lose weight. Okay. So my capacity is I'm eating well, I'm training really to what my PT or my coach is telling me to do, but I'm just not getting the gains or the results that I'm looking for, or I've been promised when I started. So you're saying the concept here in, in your algorithm or whatever you call what you just said is noise. So what would some of the noise examples be for 
me in that weight loss journey where I do have a PT or a coach and I am trying to eat right and I am I'm slogging out two sessions a day and doing the hard work? Well, I mean, the first step was we would take a step back and review what you are actually doing in your training program because yep. that mightn't be right. You said you are eating right. Well, we want to examine that. Yeah, that's good. Right? Yep. By, by examining that, it's But you're still simple. sitting in capacity there. Yeah, but yep. I, I want to actually see if there's any noise in how you're eating, even though okay. you might say a lot of people report by saying that they are eating well. So we want to look and and do a, a you know a seven day food diary and just have a look at how someone's eating. That's However, really interesting. The- I did a consult with uh, an elite athlete the other day with um, Tatiana, our nutritionist, and we were talking to them. And he goes, oh, I won't say your name. I eat really well, and he's doing got a massive endurance event, massive. Oh, I eat really well. I do the right thing and all that. And so Tatiana goes, oh, just talk me through your day of food. And so talk through, talked us through the day of food. And I look at Tatiana and said, oh, he's, they are eating well. They're just two thousand calories short of where they need to be. And everyone burst out laughing because very much calorie deficient. So you, I, I guess you're right. How do you differentiate between capacity and noise? Well, that's that's one of the things. The noise is there is someone's perception of what they're eating. So, you know, even though they're So you saying, can be your own noise. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, absolutely. And I'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about self-compassion, mm-hmm. you know, because that can be very much uh, a, a real issue in respect to the noise. Um, but one of the issues with nutrition and people not losing weight gets onto this one I always talk about and the foundation of performance is sleep. You know, it's really interesting just how much sleep and poor sleep has an effect on uh, someone's body weight. So, it's, mate, just, uh, just hitting on sleep, for the, and, and I keep going back to the basics of for the people out there because I'm really interested in this. Show us some, tell me some stats on sleep. Like, why should I care? People say sleep, sleep, sleep all the time. It's like it's the new gluten-free. So, yeah. so give me some data. Prove to me that sleep is an issue. Well, basically, if you're out there and you're getting five to six hours sleep a night, you're 4.8 times more likely to die an early death than someone's getting that is getting greater than seven to eight hours sleep. 4.8 you know, times. 40, yeah, 40 percent of our population is identifying themselves as sleep deprived. You know, poor sleep is related to numerous adverse health conditions, including, you know, stroke, cardiovascular, uh, other cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, uh, obesity. It's, it's quite incredible how much a problem sleep is if we're not getting it right. Okay. But the thing is, I, I, I agree with you. It's uh, I don't think I don't think we're really taking it seriously. Let me put it this way: you know, having poor sleep five to six hours a night may be equivalent to having fifteen cigarettes a day. Stop it. Statistics show that. You know, that has been reported. So I mean, it's costing in the U.S. alone, poor sleep is costing four hundred and eleven billion dollars a year. Now, just ask yourself the question: you know, how many hours of sleep are you getting a night? And I would say this is the greatest noise that we have in in what we talk about today. If you do not uh, hear anything I say today, just think about this and start looking at your sleep and monitoring your sleep and seeing how many hours sleep you are getting on a regular basis. So when you say monitoring your sleep, what do you mean? Well, you can do it a couple of ways. You can just keep a sleep diary, time you go to bed, time that you wake up, yep. and then rate your sleep out of out of 10, zero to 10, mm-hmm. you know, how what was my sleep quality? Or there's so much technology out there now. If you've got an Apple Watch, yep. you know, you can yep. monitor your sleep with that. I've got this wonderful thing called an Aura Ring that I monitor my sleep doing that. You've got a Garmin watch that you're wearing there. You can use that for sleep monitoring. There's a number of devices out there, you know, technological advances are happening all the time in sleep monitoring so there's no excuse for it um it is that important if you're out there and most of the people listening to this are exercising uh, are into their nutrition if you're not into your sleep you're wasting your time so craig to capitalize on the garments and the apple watches out there and the conversations happening over coffees every morning in relation to sleep so we're basically getting very simple data on average deep sleep average REM, average light sleep time awake give me the perfect night give me the scenario that we should be looking for so next tomorrow when i'm having a coffee in the morning i go hey i got an hour 33 of deep and i'm really happy i need to know is that true or not so where are we at yeah absolutely i mean there's a couple of things i mean you've mentioned a few there that we want to look at one of the other areas is sleep latency how long it takes you to actually get to sleep so you want that under 10 minutes so a lot of the the technology will have that how long did it take you to get to sleep so i'm assuming on my garmin they call that awake average awake like there's an awake time so 
Yeah. Mine says 14 minutes. Yeah, so you want to try and get that under 10 minutes, and that's how long it takes you to fall asleep, and that's that's fantastic. Okay. Ten, you know, if 10% of the time that you're asleep is in deep, and I think you said an hour of 33 for you, yep. uh, you know, that's, that's really positive. And I like to see my REM over an hour. Over so, an hour. you know, your REM sleep is where you dream. You know, that's your, your dreaming sleep. So that's really important. And the other one is your total sleep. You know, I, I really like to see that above eight hours, but definitely above seven hours. <laughs> the fact is, if you're getting less than seven hours sleep a night, you're 12% more likely to die prematurely than someone that is getting over over eight hours sleep. So under seven hours, you're putting your life at risk. Wow. So why don't insurance companies ask me how much I sleep a night? <laughs> well, I think it's a, you know, I think that's a really good question. I think we really need to take it, take it serious. I mean, sleep deprivation is a huge issue. 40% of the population identify themselves as being sleep deprived. It's it's costing, you know, in the US, $401 billion a year. The impact on productivity in the workplace is, is significant. The amount of uh, days lost, you know, at work is the relationship between that and uh, sleep is high. You know, poor sleep is related to, you know, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity. It's enormous. And I've said it before, and I'm just going to keep saying it because sometimes, you know, we've been told since we were kids, sleep was important. So we just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it really is. I'll, I'll go as far as say it's, you know, it's the foundation of performance. And if you're not getting your sleep right, but you're building aspects of your capacity, like your exercise, and, and more than likely, you're probably not eating well, if you're, if you're not getting your sleep right, you're really wasting your time. You're better off not exercising and getting your sleep right, and then start exercise. So I'm from, sorry, I know it sounds harsh, but I don't know how stronger to be about this. So from an elite team perspective, and you've done a lot of managing of elite teams, traveling in countries, like Socceroos, etc. So I won't go too deep into that. People can check your bio out underneath this in the links. What What are you looking at with athletes to help them manage this? Well, look, the same as with athletes is, I mean, look, you know, in my work, working with international teams, you've got extensive issues with the circadian rhythm because of the changes in time zones and travel on planes and all that. That's a whole different story and an interesting one. But I still believe you can maximize sleep under any conditions, actually without medication. Mm -hmm. Because often now what the what the issue is, you've got a sleep problem, you know, sadly, the doctors uh, might give you medication for that. We don't need that. We can just get our sleep strategy right. And with athletes, as with anyone, what we need to do is work on having a really good routine, you know, identifying exactly when you are going to go to sleep by working out when you are going to wake up. So if you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning, you need to start being in bed by 9.30 p.m. at night. All right. So you've got to have that routine. And an hour before you go to bed, you've got to start working on that nighttime routine, slowing yourself down, uh, reducing the amount of technology in your life, reducing the amount of light as well in, in what you're doing and then really starting to relax so you can go to bed. I don't think people have a really good nighttime routine. And so what they do is they think they, they can be watching some action packed activity, be it on a, a device or on TV and then think, oh, now I've got to go to sleep. So yeah, that's, a fair that's point. really difficult. Yeah. So what we need to do is have a nighttime routine. Do, do, in combined with that nighttime routine, were you doing things like bed management, pillow management? Were you looking at, excuse the way, I've, that didn't really make a lot of sense, but were you looking at the, the concept of people being in bed as well? as part of that managing that noise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. In the World Cup in 2018, we had every mattress individualized for every player. Wow. So we replaced every mattress in the training center specifically for each player so that they would be most comfortable as possible. Also to have that um, exactly with the pillows as well. The other thing is that I have here, and I'll, I'll show you. Don't go too far from that microphone, Craig. Uh, here I am. <laughs> I'll show you. Is, is, you know, these guys glasses you know i mean these these glasses are wonderful and and they're ones i i created there's other ones out there of course so what are they um yeah they are blue light blocking glasses so, so where do in people the get evening, blue light blocking glasses from well, you can buy them off me, so you can. You well, can we all know where to get them now. Would that be? I'll just type me.com.au in <laughs> Google. Like, where, where do I get them? You can. Yeah, you can. You can go to. Is that Dr. your Dr. Craig Duncan. Yeah, Are they expensive? These are less than fifty bucks. Oh, really? So you. Yeah, less so, than 50. so part of your nighttime strategy that hour before you're going to go to bed is to put the glasses on. I, I actually start using them as soon as the sun goes down. I just put them on and I watch TV uh, with them, and it just really reduces the strain and and relaxes me. So that's a 
really simple hack, you know, just having these blue light blocking glasses to to help with my nighttime routine. Okay, interesting. So, mate, just tapping back on something you mentioned before, you mentioned that 40% of Americans have identified with not being able to sleep. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So and I, that's I, the same, and that's mirrored in Australia. So. I assume that data is based on people going to the doctor to get uh, medication for sleep. That would be one. Of- well, look, it's, you know, it's been suggested that over 40% of the, you know, of the Western population will look for some form of medication or some form of over-the-counter, you know, thing to, to help them with sleep. So that's a real issue. So people are identifying that we've got a problem. So However, if yeah. if you're looking to, and I really want to get into this sleep management, like you've thrown some big data out there, I want to, I want to dig deep on it. And I, and I want to offer hacks. Like obviously the uh, blue block glasses is one of your hacks. Mm-hmm. Was it blue block? Is that what you called it? What did you call that? Uh, well, my glasses are called the 100X glasses. The but 100X the, glasses, okay. Yeah. I thought you could. But they're them. a blue blocker. They're just there to block the the, the blue light. So that is that is one hack. Why is blue I mean, light so bad for us? Because that's what happens is the blue light and your phone has blue light, the TV has blue light, our our lights, you know, create that as well. What happens is all this light suppresses uh, melatonin and melatonin is needed for us to start getting ready to go to sleep. So melatonin is really important. However, in our lifestyle now, what we've got is we've got all this cortisol going on. And uh, our friend Luke talks about this a lot. And it's just how much this impact of cortisol, because cortisol happens, it's a stress hormone. Okay. We don't want that rising as we go to sleep. So if you look at your work email or, you know, you're you're looking at something just before you go to sleep, that's not going to help because more than likely it's going to stress you out. And that stress is will increase the cortisol and that's going to be really negative for us sleep wise. So I don't think it's too much of a surprise to go, okay, we become this very stressed society that doesn't know how to switch off. And then in saying that, that's what's impacting our sleep. So just to recap on that, I mean, your whole role in life has been uh, human performance strategy. So you put the 100x blue block glasses on you put them on when you start watching tv before bed correct you stop all technology an hour before you go to bed yes what are we doing in that hour mate come on what are we doing yeah look i do you remember what our grandparents used to do our grandparents used to have a book yeah and they used to sit by a low a low level light and read the book as they went to sleep that's a wonderful thing to do however i'm going to say this greg you know sometimes in science we get too caught up in the exact what we need to do but i'm more into the the reality of what is actually going to be achieved. So I'm not going to say turn everything off an hour before. I'm going to say start thinking about your nighttime routine. And all I want you to focus on is calming yourself down because you are going to create an environment in yourself where you're going to be relaxed to go to sleep. End of story. I don't want to get into turn everything off and 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 be so stringent on that because I know the fact is most people won't do that. I just want you to become aware that sleep is absolutely vital and it's my whole self-science philosophy start studying yourself start thinking about this before you go to sleep i've got to calm myself down well it makes perfect sense that i don't want to read in the last hour my work email i don't want to be doing things like that that is going to stress me out so think about how are you going to relax as you go to sleep the other real hack that i work on is you know i'm i'm quite big into journaling but having a book beside your bed and every worry that is in your head, be honest with yourself, get it down on paper, write it down, crazy as it sounds, whatever it is, write it down, close the book and it's gone for that evening because worry is not going to help you sleep. When you listen to a lot of experts talk about time management and they they talk about don't go to work that day wondering what to do and let your email dictate your day, and I'm simplifying this, they talk about having the plan in place before the next day so when you wake up, you're ready, you've got a purpose, go and get it. Is Is this last hour a good time to sit on a chair and you use the word journaling as an example. Is it a good time to put down the goals? Like, what, what do I want to achieve tomorrow? What are my red frogs I want to eat? What are the things I want to go out there and get? And, and is, is that a good time or is that too much stimulation leading into that last hour? I think you've got to really focus on what's best for you. Yeah, okay. if, if that if that works for you and that's a way of getting it out of your mind, go for it. I think okay, the prob- if that's- And I'm just going yeah. to pay devil's advocate here, man. I think the problem here is if I was to sit down with, and I'll use my kids because they love it when I talk about them, and say, hey, guys, this isn't the right thing to be doing. Like, some 
Tara, my, my, my daughter is highly geared, highly intelligent, really a real go-getter. And she'll go, oh, I'm struggling to sleep. And I'll go, get off your social media. Doesn't affect me, dad. So mm. this noise management you're talking about, sometimes we just got to put our foot, foot in the water and go, hey, stop this, do this. And I know you're, and I agree with your um, N equals one strategy you just talked about then, like everyone's different. But if we were to mm. talk to any of those Gen Zers or anyone creeping into another generation, they're going to go, hey, it doesn't affect me. Well, look, the fact is, okay, if they, if they first, you know, as part of the routine, you're going to identify what time you're going to be in bed and you're going to go to sleep. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, then that's going to limit your social media, right? Yeah. Because one of the biggest problems with social media is that you get on social media and you're not strict with yourself. And before you know it, it's two hours later and you're still on social still media. Scrolling. Yep. So yeah, yeah. So the only thing I say, and you know, I work with high achieving younger people. Absolutely. And I find I find that real exciting uh, to do that. And I'm not I want I want them to come up with the answer. I say, okay, let's do this. All right. But put a put really put a stake in the ground and go, eleven o'clock, I'm done. If you're mature enough and disciplined enough to do that, go for it. All right. But if not, start saying, okay, after 10 p.m., I'm not going to do this anymore. Then that might be the better strategy. You know, I've learned long, long ago, Greg, people, it's very hard to tell people what to do. What you want is to put the information out there so people come to the their own conclusions. This is this is what will work best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting. It's one of the things we do here at work too from that corporate aspect is it's really uh, we did a lot of values setting in the last couple of years with some pretty smart people. And some of the things that came through from uh, from our business perspective is we really try to limit overtime here. I, I came from an accounting background when I was younger and it was, gee, you're leaving early. Whereas uh, the whole process we got here is let's clear the docks five o'clock, no one in the office. Let's try and manage the days correctly in our timelines and our forecasting or whatever we're doing and our planning to make sure that people don't have to do large hours outside of traditional work hours. We also identified... Um, with the team that people sending emails to each other at two o'clock in the morning and three o'clock and one o'clock actually stresses people out the next morning when they get them because they're, they're going, hey, why is he sending me an email at three o'clock in the morning? So th there's some, and, and texts, I mean, texts are hard because people are very responsive with texts, but there's some of the things from a workplace perspective that we put in place here at Body Science to help our team uh, manage that. And, you know, that that noise management, that sleep side you're talking about, there is nothing worse, I agree with you, than getting email anxiety before you want to go to sleep. Yeah, absolutely. And I think more than ever, you know, with now we've got so many people in remote workplaces. The new life in the workplaces, you know, we're going to see it more and more. It's going to be remote. And that's going to take really uh, agile leaders to manage that. And we need to give boundaries to people. So over the last, I would say over the last 10 to 15 years, people have not known when work finishes. You know, since email has become very, very popular, you know, you might get an email from a customer at 8 p.m. at night and they expect an answer. But we need to to manage that situation because we're not going to get productive people, uh, you know, when we need them to work. You mentioned accounting and law firms. Look, if there's anyone out there from an accounting or a law firm, I'll come and speak to you free because the fact is <laughs> people aren't productive living a life like that i'm sorry uh because we've got an issue of presenteeism if you're at work but you're not doing anything what's the point of you being there and we've all been in that situation oh, i'm not leaving till so and so's leaving and then they're thinking i'm not leaving till so and so's leaving and then what are we actually doing with well, our that life was the charter accounting firm i was at that was definitely uh, the, the the theories that went out every night yeah so we've got to you know really look at the productivity and what we're getting done but it's a real issue that we we really need to work with. And I applaud Body Science for having some of those things in place, okay? And I hope other organizations and, and leaders start to think along the well-being of their employees and absolutely the well-being of their leaders as well. Am I able to ask you, to, would you be able to put a blog together for our, our corporate-based blog for our yeah. website, bodyscience.com.au, and we'll, we'll title it along the lines, Managing the Noise. So anyone who's listening to this podcast can jump on from a corporate aspect and have a look at maybe you know your top 10 things to manage the noise and one might yeah, be perhaps. you know a culture of not sending emails after hours and because nobody on nobody on a mobile phone at 
10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night is writing a nice email. They're just getting shit out of their head. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I've seen people send emails at 2 o'clock in the morning to pretend that they're actually a hard worker, where if I was their leader, I'd be thinking, wow, you're one of the most unproductive people, you know, because why are you working at that hour? Isn't you know? it interesting when you what? talk about work culture, and we'll get back on to managing the noise. I, I was reading something the other day, because I love reading about culture and leadership and that, and I was reading that it's actually seen as a positive to fall asleep at your desk at work in Japan because it's identified as you are a hard worker giving everything you've got to your work, you need to have a break. Now, isn't that a really yeah. different mindset to what you just said? Yeah, well, absolutely. And, you know, culturally, Japan, and, and I've worked there in sport as well, and there was a lot of barriers to break down in respect to managing the noise because you can imagine the sporting teams, they train like it's a workplace. Yeah, well, they're owned by the, they're owned by the corporates, aren't they? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the idea of recovery and managing management of training loads is is quite foreign. And I, I believe, you know, the Japanese in, in soccer could win the World Cup. They're that talented. But one of the issues is that they don't get this strategy right in respect to the capacity and the noise. If they really focused on managing the noise, they've got the capacity that they would get the net gain in performance and they would be very successful. Well, let, let's not tell them that. Mate, like getting back to managing the noise, so we've really harped on sleep and I think that that's come across loud and clear now. What are a couple of other things we need to look at? And I'm talking big picture things here. People have got 30, 40 minutes to listen to this and they need to pick off two or three things from this chat. So sleep's a big one. And we've given, I think you've given some great hacks and some ideas and it's up to the person to manage their own sleep patterns now. What have you, what else have you got for us? Well, you know, 2.4 million Australians have high levels of stress. 2.4 million. That's a lot of people. <laughs> Recognize that they've got high levels of stress. I mean, it just become part of our language. How are you going, Greg? Uh, I'm so stressed. In actual fact, today, when when we first got on, I said, how are you going, Greg? And you went, ah, I'm so... And and you're one of the most, uh, most positive people I know that manages stress very well. So if it can get to you, it can get to anyone. So what is stress? But stress, I tell you what, it's noise and it's so loud in people's life. Amplified. That it's incredible. I mean, you know, they, they say six, $60 billion in Australia, $60 billion is spent on... The problems of stress wow and hence uh, you know mental illness you know wow. and it's it's a huge issue you know and and you so correlate what, the two heavily you obviously you've used the two in the one sentence there well look i mean there's always there's there's numerous mental you know mental illnesses but yep. One of the biggest ones is anxiety and stress that people really report. And uh, and, and I think if we were, uh, you know, anyone listening there now, I'm sure at some stage in your life you've had stress. Yep. Okay, but what is stress? I mean, stress is needed for us, right? But distress is is the problem and i and i think it's a perception issue really you know, it's really really a perception issue it's how we view the world and see what the you know the situation is work stress is enormous you talked about workplace culture you know it gets back to the organization and how it's led we've talked about sleep it's a cycle. Poor sleep will make you more more right. open yep. to being stressed, but then stress causes you problems with your sleep. And that's why I was so adamant on having a ritual or routine to help you go to sleep. Now, we've got to look at how can we manage stress more effectively. Come on, you know, Greg, we've, we've got one life here, you know, and and we have to really view this this area of stress and and look our friend Luke Mathis talks about it I mean it's his whole area but what is actually going on I mean we need now to set ourselves a goal individually that we're going to start to reduce this and then how do we reduce it okay mate that's well, a that's a great story and I, I didn't mean to cut you off there what do I do if I'm an individual who goes you know yeah that's me so yeah. I've identified well, it a- that's me so what, what what are my steps do I go see a doctor do I see a naturopath do I get a massage? Do I just simply write some things on paper? Do I do I change a habit? What do I do? Well, let's first let's start right. You know, way back is is just to analyze the situation. And one of the biggest things to analyze is to go, okay, what can I control and what I can't control? Yep. And let's put them in two boxes. And I will suggest to you most of the things you're getting stressed about are in the box that you have no 
control over. So is stress a problem of control? I okay. think often it is. You know, we we really need to look at this. Look, we can talk about the dichotomy of control, like, you know, we can't control what we can't control and what we can control. But I do also think there's things that are somewhat in our control. So what I want you to think of is, okay, I can't control how my boss acts. I can't control that. I can't control how my, my friends act. I can't control what they say. I can't control anyone, basically, how they act. However, However, somewhat in my control, I can be the very best I can be, and then how they act out of my control, let it go. You know, that's I know it's easy to say but hard to do. But I know for a person such as myself, that's the the best progress I've made in my life is working out what I can control and what I can't control. I work with a lot of high achievers, and it seems to be a lot of people that are high achievers are also a little bit on the on the side of being a control freak. That's not a positive thing. So with being a control freak comes a hell of a lot of stress, all right? Because you're you're going to, you know, try to get things under control that are not able to be controlled. So do that. Put it on paper. What can I control? What can't I control? What is stressing me out? Are they under my control? Or are they not under my control? The next thing is on the same piece of paper is talk about perception. You know, I don't believe that there's good or bad days as such. There is just days. I'm with right? you on that. Because that's, that's me the too. perception. Yep. Now, we, we spoke off air about something that happened to body science years ago. Now, we could look at that and it was it was really a difficult time, okay? And there's many companies out there now going through a difficult time. But out of the difficult time, can we can get wonderful growth if we actually look for it. You know, today I wrote on Instagram, you know, what, what did you learn from today? Every day we've got an opportunity to learn. So it doesn't mean it has to be a great day for us just to learn these lessons. It can be any day. It's it's just how we perceive life and, and what is good and what is bad. Forget that. It just is. And then then look at it from that perception. You know, stress is stress is a killer. You know, it really is a killer. Just like sleep. Again, it's related to so many chronic conditions. So it, it's something that we need to work on so loud. It's such a huge noise in our life that if you're not working on stress, if you're not working on sleep, I'm going to ask you now, why bother going to the gym? Yeah, why so bother true. exercising? So and, and look, I don't want you to stop doing those things. I want you just to pay attention to this other side of the equation. Stress is enormous, but we can change it if we really want to. For everyone out there that's you know not monitored or not part of some type of program or not working with someone like you, Craig, which I do, and I love those questions you ask me every day. Two of the things I've developed myself in this process of, of managing stress is one is, and, and this one came from Luke, is write down what your stress problem is. And it's part of that journaling that you got into my life. But then write down what's the complete opposite of that. So if your stress is, oh, these idiots did this and da-da-da and blah, 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 write down what the complete opposite of that, of that is. And then look at that. And quite often you look and go, oh, hang on, it's not that bad. And, and that's one way I look at that low-level slight anxiety type stress that you talk about. The other side is in your can and what can I control and what can't I control model is I, I added a third bucket on that. Will I care about this next week? Because you know how you say monitor yourself and look at yourself and what works best for you? When I go the... the can I control it? Not gonna, and I, I just get frustrated by the fact that, that I can't control something if I can't control it. So I just look at it now like, will I care about this next week? And if I do, will care about it next week, I need to change strategies or programs or do put something in place to make sure that isn't a problem next week. So I, I find that gives me that time to stop and think and react that you talk about all the time and not just burst out with that initial blah, 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 like a lot of people in authority can do over someone who works for them or someone, a coach on an athlete or a, a, you know, a parent on a child. You know, it, For me, that is, and it's one of the great things from having you ask me these questions every time is I, I've developed myself to go when something bad happens in the process of me getting to where I want to be I just go am I really going to care about this not happening this next week and, and like today's a great example you rang to me said how's your day going I'm like blah 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 it's because you're sitting on for a podcast and we're so busy developing some products we actually left you on there for half an hour until I went didn't I have a podcast today <laughs> and everyone just jumped up and went oh shit let's get out there and I thank you for hanging in there mate I'm really sorry about that we try to be professional and stuff but we I, I guess you just become part of the family now so it's um you know bad luck Craig but it's it's really you know when I looked at it I said am I really going to care about this next week no I'm not because you and I are going to laugh about it later and you know I'm, Ash will come up to me and go oh gee Greg I blew that sorry mate and I'll go yeah just don't do it again and that's it move on you know what I mean it's not yeah, not, it's not worth being angry about and the or, thing I, is 
Yeah. I, I just thought it was time difference. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, it was. That's that. what it was, Craig. It was 100% time difference, and we'll delete that last two minutes, what I just spoke about. But they're the things uh, I've worked out. Like Luke is one who told me to write down what your major problem is. If it's one of those ones in your head that just is bashing you and will not let go, he said, write down the complete opposite of it. And I, you know what? It really works. Like if you've got this major issue with someone or something, write down what would be the best version of that on the other side. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I, and I think Luke's got some great strategies. The other thing I found, uh, you know, during during stressful times is I really focus on living in day tight compartments. Okay. Okay. So I really make the most of each day. Now that's very hard for me because I'm a forward thinker. Now that doesn't mean you don't have a plan for the future, but I think once you have that plan, you need to live in this day tight compartment. And do you know what? It's incredible because I think it was Mark Twain that had this wonderful quote and I'll misquote it, but Basically, what he was saying is he had enormous issues in his life. Most of them never, ever came true because they were in <laughs> his so imagination, true, yeah. what, what he was actually thinking about. And that really resonated with me. And so I live my life in day tight compartment. And then I find, wow, things aren't, aren't really that bad. See, often we're off off in front of ourselves and we're worrying about things and most of the time when we get to actually that thing if it's still existing it's not half as bad as we uh, made it out to be you know I touched on journaling helping with sleep you know journaling in the morning and having a morning routine you know we've talked about this before but for me it's imperative if you don't have a lot of time in the morning just keep it simple you know just write a couple of notes in your journal whatever it is just write something it becomes a story of you write your worries down get them down on paper and then see if they actually, you know, do they come true, these worries? And uh, what are you actually stressing about? One of the things I love from working with you is one of the strategies you put in place for me every morning is, you know, resetting, being ready and, you know, put your feet on the carpet and just go, what are three things that I'm thankful for? And, you know, that can sound really, to someone who's not into it, they can go, yeah, that is the dumbest ass idea I've ever heard. But for me, I just, I love it. Like three things I'm thankful for, they're different every day and you get up with a smile on your face and it's really hard yeah. to be stressed when you're smiling. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. And I would go, the next noise is uh, lack of gratitude. Yeah, okay. I think that's huge, yep. a huge issue. So let's hit that one. What do you know about, t- tell us more about what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, you know, two and a half million, two and a half billion people out of seven billion people on this planet don't have clean water and sanitation. Wow. So, so what I'll say to you is, you know, there's over seven billion people in the world and you've got your life and I say to you, okay, Greg, do you want to swap your life with anyone? But it's random. It's a seven, over seven billion chance. You can you can swap your life with anyone. We'll roll a dice and there you go. Well, it hasn't changed. Are you gonna take, no. You're going to take that chance? There's about 300 million plus kids don't even get to go to school. You know, like it, it's enormous. You know, the average income worldwide is $18,000 a year. Now, everyone can say, okay, all right, that's, that's really good. But I'm going to ask yourself the question now, would you swap your life? No. Yeah. But would anyone swap their lives? So because the thing is, what we look at, we can get down and we're sort of wired some ways to look on the negative. And that's why we pull out these things and having this grateful uh, practice. And what I said to you, you know, three things a day. What are you grateful for? And it can't be simple things like my family or my my children or whatever like that. It has to be specific things, you know, like. Like, look at if we're in Australia now, my goodness, you know, just look at this COVID-19 situation, how wonderful it has been, you know, for us and how much safer we are than other countries. Absolutely. You know, we've got to be we've got to be grateful for that. There is so much for us to be grateful for. But what we look at is the, the, you know, often the negatives in life. So stop each morning and just go three things I'm grateful for. Sometimes you won't want to write them. okay? but if you do and you you really work on that, you'll start to see life a lot differently. So I think that the entitlement and absence of gratefulness is is real noise in your life and takes away from your capacity. Interesting. And, and that is a major noise in people's life? Absolutely. What do you think? I, I see it often. I, you know. Well, one, once again, I think it works with the other two. It works with stress. It works with sleep. The three work together. If you're, you have no grat- gratitude or you're not grateful for things, you sure as shit are going to be living in a stressed lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, you know, I, I always think 99.9% of the population is wonderful people. Mm. You know, I, I really do. But we sometimes 
are just darkened by our experiences that are fully understandable. But you know what? We do, we can, we can do it. We can, we can break away from that, I think. And look, I've been blessed. I've had a very fortunate life. However, I've worked with a lot of people that have had difficult lives and I've seen them have wonderful lives because they've actually made that decision. So they've started to manage the noise. Do you just want to tell me your algorithm again for being complete here? Yeah, basically human performance is a relationship between your capacity and all the detractors from your capacity, which I call the noise. And so we've talked about managing this noise. Let's start silencing the noise. And we've spoken about some key ones today. Sleep. You know, sleep. Yeah, absolutely important. Stress. We need to get that right. Stress, and that's related to sleep as well. And then gratitude, you know, being grateful um, will help you. Okay. And, and that's an interesting one because gratefulness, you know, it builds your capacity, but being lack, lacking gratefulness or not being grateful is is noise and it will take away from your capacity. So there's a few, there's, of course, there's others as well. There's exercise, good nutrition, all these things we need to, you know, need to work on. If they're a problem, they'll become very noisy and take away from your capacity. So what we have to do is really manage this noise, silence this noise, so we get a net gain in our performance. So mate, you are the man when it comes to him performance strategy. Do you want to just give us a brief overview of your bio? I know we shouldn't be doing this at the end of a podcast, but you'll understand where I'm going with this. Yeah, basically, look, I I studied sports science and then did my doctorate in sports science and have been very fortunate to work, you know, over 20 years in professional sport, um, mainly focusing on football and soccer, you know, with international teams, local professional teams as well, but also with New South Wales State of Origin, uh, Manly Rugby League, Bulldogs Rugby League, uh, multiple teams around. I've really enjoyed that. And then taking a lot of what we've learned from those areas uh, into the corporate environment and, you know, into everyone as well. And and that's what I really find helpful every human to maximize their potential. Great. And mate, we've talked about a lot of things here. You've, 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 you've touched on sleep, stress, and being grateful. So you actually have a journal called the 100X Journal. Is that correct? Yep. The 100X Journal is, uh, I think it's very good. It's got great reviews as well. It's flexible and it's got a lot of our, uh, you know, our theories in it as well to start you off. And and that's very valuable. So all the things we talked about, it's a guide to get you to start doing a lot of these processes. Yeah. And the new book, Self Science, A Study of You by You, sold out its first uh, first run. So yeah, we've nice. got a new run on now. Yeah. So that's been really good. Great now reviews me a copy to read luke stole it <laughs> you want another copy no i'll get it off him but it's uh I, I think it's something he enjoyed too mate and then you've got the 100x glasses so anyone out there that's looking to implement some of these strategies if they go to drcraigduncan.com.au like drcraigduncan.com.au they can get all these products yeah absolutely and and just contact me directly if you want at Dr. Craig Duncan uh, on Instagram is always a good place to get me. So, and you, you're very open to answering questions and helping people start the process. Write me a question. I try, and I actually don't ever not answer. So I'm really, I'm really good at that. That's great. So, mate, thanks for coming on board. It's really great to have you part of the Body Science family. For everyone out there, I just want to say a massive thank you for listening to our podcast. We appreciate it. We appreciate the people that come on. Please subscribe if you're listening to it on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Body Science Podcast. Please subscribe. We love it. If you do, we can keep doing more in the future. Thanks for coming on board, mate. Thank you.